Now at the moment I'm giving zero inputs and this is really demonstrating quite nicely how well the optical flow sensor is actually working there and it's working absolutely brilliantly. <laughs> Premium drones such as the DJI Mavic incorporate a feature called Optical Flow or VPS which is basically a downward facing camera constantly tracking the ground and enabling the drone to hover in position without needing GPS. This technology has made indoor flight far easier and safer. Mid-range drones such as the new hover camera from Sim2 also now feature Optical Flow and they did a great job of implementing it. The hover is really impressive and stable. Other manufacturers, however, weren't so successful, so much so that Wingsland have now disabled the optical flow sensor on the Wingsland S6 because it was basically useless. Now, Chearson have launched a drone for under £40 or $45, which incorporates optical flow, but at this price, will it be any good? In this review, you're going to find out. Please be sure to subscribe and comment below. Links to the products are in the video description. So here it is from Banggood, packaged safely as usual in black plastic and then protected as well by an inner layer like that, which is nice. And I'm quite excited about this one because optical flow is great for new pilots and it's gonna make their lives much easier for sure. So here it is, the Cheerson CXOF, and it's packaged really nicely, and they're clearly proud of the fact that this is a micro quadcopter that has an optical flow sensor. Incredible that a quadcopter this small can have optical flow tracking, and it's a sign of really positive things to come. This thing is just microscopic. So here it is, I'm actually gonna zoom the camera in. So it fits so easily in the palm of my hand. We've got a small camera on the front, which is actually a 0.3 megapixel camera. So you're only gonna get 640 by 480 video out of this, but this isn't for video, this is for fun. Look at the form factor of this, it's just tiny. We have micro props here. I think they are literally one inch props. On the back, we've got an on and off button and also a very small little charging port. And it's quite a chunky little unit and it's got a bit of weight behind it and that's because underneath there is an optical flow camera. Now I can't quite believe that a quadcopter this tiny has optical flow tracking. It's only going to work to a certain altitude which is about three to five meters. What the optical flow camera does basically is constantly watch the ground. If it detects that the quadcopter is drifting to one way or the other, then it automatically corrects itself. So ultimately what you get is a quadcopter which will hover perfectly on the spot and not move from its position without you touching the controls. Similar to the kind of functionality you get with GPS on the bigger quadcopters, but this has no GPS, it's purely optical flow. The only implication worth noting is that sometimes optical flow won't work on ground which is all one colour or which is shiny. So if you do find that you've got one of these and it's drifting, try flying it above a surface like this table here where there's lots of texture. So that's the quad, really impressive. It actually only weighs 24 grams and look at that in the palm of my hand, it's just tiny. Let's have a look at what else is in the box. So beneath the quadcopter we've got a rather lovely looking transmitter and it's very small and compact. We've got rounded edges as well here and it's actually a, a break away from the, the normal Shearson style transmitters that they normally ship with their quads. This one's very cool actually, very streamlined. At the top here we've got an extending little phone mount so that you actually get a live preview via the app which will connect to this quadcopter. So using that you can dock your phone in here and watch the live preview whilst flying it. We've also got analog sticks here for throttle and rudder, aileron and elevator here. We've then got takeoff button and landing. We've got sensitivity, high or low. And then finally 3D, so this will do flips and things as well. And then of course an on and off button. And what's quite nice is that it comes with batteries. Not many of these budget transmitters do include batteries. This one does. So on the underside of the transmitter is a tiny little USB port and you actually get a USB charging cable with the drone so that you can charge up the transmitter on the move from any regular mobile phone charger. So that's quite nice rather than having to worry about batteries all the time. 
In that bag of goodies are four spare props, a prop removal tool, and also a little charger for the drone, and then obviously the USB charging cable that we have for the transmitter that we showed you earlier. Getting set up and connected with the transmitter and the quad is very easy. So turn the transmitter on and it will give a beep. Then turn the quadcopter on and give it a few seconds. We then just simply take the throttle to naught, to then full, and then to naught again. And that's it. The lights will actually then stop flashing on the quadcopter. The other thing you can then do at that point is connect the app to the Chearson and we'll show you that next. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail regarding the app because I want the focus of this review really to be on the optical flow sensor. We've all seen mobile phone controlled drone apps before and they're all very generic. But the app for this one is called CX-OF and if you search for that you'll see it listed there top left. Click on it to install it and of course accept all of the permissions that it requires and after a short time that will finish installing. Once it's finished installing, open up the app and the first thing you'll need to do, of course, is connect Wi-Fi. You see in the bottom right hand corner here. So pressing that will open up your Wi-Fi settings, connect it to the drone, which will be emitting a Wi-Fi signal once it's been turned on for a while. And you'll then be able to access all of the other features here. So the first feature, of course, is free flight, which is basically just flying the drone via the app or flying it with the transmitter with a live view via the app. So we're not connected to the drone at the moment, but in the background, we'd get a live view from the camera. Very quickly across the top, we've got the button to take a photo. Of course, we've got the start and stop video as well. We've got gyro mode, which is basically where you can press that once and then tilt the phone to control the drone. That's quite a nice feature for beginners, actually. We've then got the sensitivity, so we can toggle that from 30, 60 to 100. And that's basically how fast the drone's going to move when you give it some input. We've then got 360, which is to do flips and other sort of acrobatics. And then this is an interesting one, which is basically a way that you can draw on the screen where you want the drone to go. Now, remember, this drone has no GPS, so it's only going to fly to the best of its abilities to go in the path that you've drawn. And remember that it's not going to come back. So you might want to do a path like that, for example, so that at least it flies back to you. Then we've got settings and we've got a calibrate button at the top there. We've got one to tilt the screen around if you want to use it in landscape or portrait mode. VR splits the screen in two so you can use it in a headset and the eye icon there is just simply to hide the controls. Then looking in the middle of the screen we've got our joysticks which unfortunately don't move to where your fingers are. You have to put your fingers on those joysticks. I really don't like that sort of mechanism on a phone app for drones. Then we've got the takeoff and landing buttons in the middle and in the middle of those is a selfie button which basically reverses the controls and turns the drone around so that you can take a photo of yourself. And then finally at the bottom we've got trimmers for trimming the quad in case you get any drift when you're flying it. Flicking back to the main screen of the app, the next feature is choreography. And basically this is a way to make your drone dance. Here you've got like a musical score and basically you add lots of little movements and interactions onto it and the drone will move itself. So you see the first action here is takeoff. After takeoff I can then add a move so I'm going to make it go up and down a little bit. I'm then going to make it fly forwards and backwards and left and right. And there are a number of other preset moves on here that you can also add. And basically, once you've choreographed your little drone dance, you press start and it dances to the music. So quite cool, a bit of fun. I think this could work really well indoors as well because the optical flow sensor will keep it nice and in position. So yeah, a bit of fun, a bit of a gimmick perhaps. So that's a really quick run through of the app. As I said, I'm not going to go into any further detail regarding the app. Let's get flying. So I wouldn't normally test a micro little drone like this outside because they're normally too small to cater for any possible wind. But today it's a lovely still day and so we're going to give it a try. So God, I love the little portable size of this thing. It's just unreal. So I'm going to put it on its little box and use that as its takeoff pad going to start the transmitter by turning it on and then turn the drone on by pressing the little on and off switch which starts the little lights flashing all over it. Uh, clean the optical flow sensor down on, on the underside and set it down there. Now to initialize the transmitter down up and then down again and we're now connected. Now I'm not going to venture into the app for this little drone. The reason is you don't really buy these little types of drones to be flying them via the app 
Flying this via a transmitter is a much better experience and we've got a transmitter with it, so we're gonna try it with that. The app does of course work. This has a tiny little camera on the front of it, so you are gonna get some video, but it's a 0.3 megapixel. Don't expect good quality video from this. This review is more about the flying experience and to see how the optical flow sensor performs. So, right, let's take off. And we do that by pressing the up button on the transmitter. Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> this thing's so small. Now, at the moment, I'm giving zero inputs. And this is really demonstrating quite nicely how well the optical flow sensor is actually working there. And it's working absolutely brilliantly. Now, remember, this is a tiny little microscopic quadcopter. And yet it's got a downward facing camera, which is looking at the ground and the terrain beneath it. And it's automatically maintaining its position based on that. And that is pretty impressive. It's got such a cute little whiz, uh, su such a cute little whine to it as well. So <laughs> again, I've still not touched the transmitter here. This thing is flying entirely by itself hovering it on its own, on the spot, and doing so absolutely effortlessly. So impressive. Um, now this optical flow sensor works apparently up until about three to five meters. So let's just give this a bit of a altitude boost. Let's see how well it can hold its position now. It's still holding its position. There isn't any wind, but you know, you always get drift on these non-GPS quadcopters. Let's take it a bit higher. I would expect it to drift a bit from this altitude. Ah, typical. We've got a flat battery. <laughs> Unbelievable. So I don't really have an ideal takeoff pad here. You can see the next review here, ready and waiting, but we're going to use my phone as a temporary takeoff pad and press the takeoff button. Up it goes. <laughs> so this time it's uh, hopefully the battery's fully charged and look at that hover. I mean, it's just great. Again, it's, it is a bit breezy, so you can see it correcting its position, but it's hovering really, really well with that optical flow. So optical flow mode is on at the moment and you can see it's doing its best to resist the wind, but let's take it for a little fly around, see how it flies. Oh, it's so cute. It's like a big wasp flying around you. <laughs> I mean, it's so stable and controlled. We've got the optical flow mode on, remember, at the moment. So what that means is that even though I'm in moving, even though I'm in forward flight, it's still trying to scan the ground. So what you can do, if I just stop for a second, if I press the HL button and hold it, that turns off optical flow and you can see now it's drifting away from me. But look at the speed because it's now no longer having to worry about the ground and instead it's just focusing on wherever I'm telling it to fly. Now we're actually only on low rates at the moment, low flight speed. So if I press this just once, uh, I think now we're on, uh, let's have a look. Oh, there we go. Now I'm on third flight speed mode, which, yeah, it's really quick for a tiny little quadcopter and it's so stable as well. So, right, I'm just going to do a bit of an altitude test and see how high up we can get it to maintain its position. So let's try up there. Now we've got a little bit of drift, but not a lot. Not doing bad, a bit higher. I'm, a sh I'm actually shocked it's still holding its position even at that altitude. A little bit of drift actually. Yeah, okay, it's starting to lose it, but then again, we are flying above grass. Now I'm gonna turn off optical flow mode because it is actually much more fun when you're flying in forward flight. I think my advice would be use the optical flow mode when you're indoors. When you're outdoors, probably turn it off because you don't really need it unless you're learning to fly. fly really really well. Um, the control is quite nice actually you know if you've got these analog controls here um, you could do the sticks being a bit bigger you could always super glue something on. Now it looks like we're out of battery already that was fully charged as well let's see if we can take off again. Yeah 
we're up. And it's auto landing again. Yeah, so uh, unfortunately, that was a fully charged battery. I would say the flight time was probably only about two minutes, maybe two and a half minutes. But then again, imagine how tiny the battery is inside this and it's having to power two cameras. So I'm not going to do a full summary review for this at the end of this review um, because, I mean, it's a cheap budget quadcopter. The optical flow works really well, especially indoors where it is absolutely brilliantly, really impressive. Uh, there is a 720p version of this one coming out as well and you can of course also fly this with the app uh, and it has a stunt mode so it does little forwards and back flips but you know what can I say really I'm testing this for the optical flow and that works really really well so well done Chearson this is a great sign of things to come. So there you go, the first truly budget quadcopter with optical flow, a feature normally only reserved for the premium quadcopters. If you'd like to know more or you'd like to buy the CXOF, links are in the video description and you support our channel by buying via our links. Please be sure to drop a comment below as we'd love to hear from our viewers and give the video a thumbs up. And of course, please click subscribe if you're not already a Droning On subscriber because we have some giveaway competitions planned and you will not want to miss out. Thanks very much for watching.